Before we get into it, is there anything else that you wanted to kind of set the stage with before we start pulling apart each suburb and kind of the, the pros, cons and all the rest? Sure. So with these kind of markets, especially the sub 400k market, they're moving very quickly and they might not be 400 under 400k in a few weeks, few months time. Okay. So, so if anyone's listening to this in, in a year's time or even a few months time, this, this could be very different information then. Absolutely could be. And it's not an exhaustive list either. Gotcha. Okay. All right. What's um, suburb number one on the list? Suburb number one, we are heading to Far North Queensland to Woolgaroo. Woolgaroo. Okay. Far North Queensland. And what are we looking at for like a median price there? 368. That's the median price. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and right. a yield of 6.1%. Townsville is super exciting. Capital of Far North Queensland, population 200,000 people, lowest unemployment rate in history for Townsville, 2%. 2% unemployment rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, because Townsville has been hot for a little while, but I, I've got to ask though, because Townsville was hot a while back, like we're talking a decade or so ago, and then it kind of went backwards. Like, why is it still good for long term now? What makes you confident that it's not just going to fall into that slump? It's a really good question. So when we look at things from a macro level, the biggest change has been the amount of government investment in the area. We're talking billions. The The economy is very diversified now from defence, healthcare, James Cook University. There's so much employment options in Townsville. And also it's really standing up as a tourist destination as well. Like it, it's an awesome area, tropical, far north Queensland. Okay, so like, In a nutshell, the economy is a lot stronger. 100%. Okay. But Economics 101, the supply is severely diminished at the moment and the demand is very high. Makes sense. All right. And as far as um, like 368 as a median, I've got to ask, what's like your record for securing a property? Have you actually got anything in the twos still or is that like... No, th- those days are gone. And, and this is why I would say to people who say, you know, either way to save or why would you buy in areas not like this? Not everybody can afford to buy in, in blue chip areas and be negatively geared 30K a year. Like for average people like, you know, myself, we, we want to have some, some cash flow. We want to have some options, some choice. So you don't, you can't save your way to, you know, securing your financial future. So if you have borrowing power, these are some suburbs you can look at, obviously do your own due diligence, but as far as our data goes and where we're investing personally and professionally, like, all bets are off. We're unlocking the vault. This is where we are buying. I'm not sure I'd call you an average person, Dawn. If you want to rewind back about 50-odd episodes and we actually unpack Dawn's portfolio, you've got some pretty good runs on the board. Yeah, but those runs on the board were, i am been an intensive care unit nurse for 15 years. So that's on, you know, the, the average Australian wage, 100K as a nurse, 12-hour night shifts. Okay, so, yeah, I'm hearing yeah. what you're saying. But as far as the 250k property, that Mm -hmm. doesn't exist anymore. We're talking about Brisbane a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And so for people who say those properties don't grow, what are they worth now? Like 500, 600 in a lot of cases. Exactly. I was talking to someone who bought in Eleonora 15 years ago, a house, 368,000. It's worth 1.4 million now. That's a nice appreciation. Of course, because supply, demand, affordability, you buy the right asset in the right area at the right time, you're going to do pretty well. Love it. Let's jump into uh, suburb number two, Dawn. Where are we looking? We're still in Townsville for this one. Okay. Currajong. Great area. 388k. You said Currajong? Currajong. Currajong. 388. Okay. Yeah. And what about the yield? 5.7%. And as far as um, uh, proximity, are we talking like next door neighbours or are we talking like complete opposite ends of Townsville? Because Townsville is a pretty big place. Correct. So Woolgaroo is next to Annandale on mm. that side. And then Currajong, you've got that Heatley, Aitken Vale triangle. So those suburbs are really doing very well, very strong as regards growth. Continued days on market are dropping and there's such limited supply. The vacancy rate is also 0.3%. It's had 15% rental growth in the last 12 months. And it has only grown 29% over the last three years. So why that's important is we want to look at areas that have grown less than 50% over three years because we don't want to buy in an area that's grown over 50% because it's already grown 50%. We want to get the Mm -hmm. maximum amount of growth. So you're looking through the dirty windshield, not the clear rearview mirror. 
hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. And and what about the affordability factor? Are these still like relative to local incomes still very affordable for locals as well? Because it's easy for me to look at that and go three eighty eight. Wow, that's pretty good. But are the wages lower? No. So uh, in in these areas, the the demographic has a really strong weekly wage round between anything from sixteen hundred to nineteen hundred a week. So the people in these areas can afford sustained rental increases as well as if we extrapolate the data, mortgages of upwards of seven hundred thousand. And our yield's still around that, did you say six percent? What was it again? Five point seven. So however close, the close rents yeah, the yeah. rents are still rising. But with Townsville and I think a lot of people are blindsided again by the short term with investing. So mm. Never invest for what you can't control. You can't control interest rates, insurance costs, government policy. Invest based on data, Mm -hmm. supply and demand metrics, investment in an area. Don't, I see a lot of people are yield frigid at the moment. So Mm -hmm. they're waiting, you know, for yields to improve. But in actuality, the prices are going to continue to rise because of the lack of supply. People are saying, I'm going to wait for the interest rates to drop. But what happens when the rates drop is that people can afford to buy, borrow more. So then the prices go up and your yields are no different. I kind of feel like you've just got those two classifications of people. You've got the waiters and you've got the doers. And the waiters will always pick a reason as to why they're waiting. And the doers will always find a reason as to why it's time to do. But if, if you're maybe sitting on the fence going, yeah, maybe I have been waiting a little while. It's never too late to become a doer. No, you just... You just have to get in. I see people with all these plans and it's like they have a a portfolio in in their dreams, but you have to actually go and buy a property to to get started. Totally agree. All right, what's area number three there, Dawn? So we are heading to Rockhampton. So we are in central Queensland and we're going to a place called Coongal where the median is 331,000. 331, okay, yeah. Yield is (laughs) 6.5%. As you do. Vacancy (laughs) 0.1%. Point one, so pretty much non-existent. Correct. 20% rental growth in the last 12 months. When you're talking to PMs over there, what, what kind of demand are they getting? Like, How many people are lining up to an open for rent? There's probably about 10 applications, 10 to 14 applications per house in that area. They're just the applications, so not just people rocking up. Just the applications, up. Yeah, no, right. just the applications. And with Kungal and why I wanted to include it, it is that lower price point, but again, mm. It's for an investor who perhaps isn't afraid to roll their sleeves up. They are high set homes that, you know, some of them are from the 1920s. But I love those homes. They've been around since the 1920s. They've stood the test of time. Yes, there may be more maintenance involved, but they're a nice one to have in your portfolio, I think. So strong cash flow. And, And when you're talking about it in this sense of work to be done, work to be done from like a equity uplift point of view or just more so maintenance work to be done? Maintenance, like, you know, with the high sets, you might have to replace a couple of posts every so every so often over time or there just might be more leaks or just different things you have to factor into your, to your cash flow. But when you're buying at that lower base, mm-hmm. the affordability is, is crazy. And when you're getting a 6.5% gross yield, yeah, I can see how you can factor a bit of that into the budget. Yeah, absolutely. And that's at this interest rate. Yeah, wow. Okay. All right, number four on the list. Is Gracemere. So this is, uh, again, in Rockhampton. This is more for the investor who wants, the stock is a bit newer. The median there is 418. However, we are still getting three by ones, three by twos in the high 300s there. Okay, Uh, so you're still purchasing under four. Correct. The 400k median is skewed by the four by twos on the bigger blocks. You can still right. get three by twos on 600 plus square meters for 385 that will rent for 460. And when you say three by twos, that, that kind of configuration generally wasn't an older property. That was more of a, in the nineties, it started happening more frequently. These properties are only like 15 years old, 10 oh, wow. years old. So these are low set, set and forget properties. So these are very popular for either the first time investor who, because, you know, it is scary for people to invest their money, especially interstate. And I think it's easy for people who've been investing for a while to kind of go in, you know, gangbusters and say, oh, buy here, buy there. But it's a very scary thing for people to invest in property. So somewhere like Gracemere could be the ideal place for someone who's just looking to get in low stress, really low vacancy rate. Still a bit of depreciation on the table as well. Correct. Okay. And what kind of yield are we looking 
yield was around 6%. 6%. So 6% yield, 418, but you're saying that that's more so skewed from the four and twos. And just for anyone that's newer investing, it's a four bedroom, two bathroom kind of configuration, still picking up three bed, two baths. And what kind of a block size are we on? This is like courtyard sort of style or? No, like 600. So six, still good Six blocks. to seven, correct. Okay. And on, on the land component then as well, for anyone that's like, oh yeah, but these towns, they've got like thousands, millions of acres around them. Who cares of having a land component? What would you say to that? So what I would say is that if you're getting into a market where you're buying for 385, so what is the new build going to cost that's in the next area over if you're doing price comparison? So a new build, or you might be all in to buy with the land, you know, 550, 600. Because realistically, 385, you're kind of getting the land for free. Correct. Because how much would it cost to build that house now? Probably 400 ish. You're not going to find anyone to build it, first of all. Yeah, that, that's a good point as well. Interesting, Dawn. I like this. Now, what's our lucky last on the list? Unless lucky there's something last. else you had want to say on Grace Muir or? Uh, no, I just really like Rockhampton because, you know, population 80,000, it's super close to Yapoon. Yapoon's a really nice beach area, about 40 minutes drive away. Billions, again, billions of dollars of investment from the Queensland government mm -hmm. into Rockhampton. Very diverse economy. It's it's really, it's a great area. I still remember the very first time I ever heard of Yapoon was when I was uh, drilling underground. It was 2006 and one of the guys up there was bragging that he bought a beachfront property for $400,000. Mm. And he's like, I actually own a part of the beach. And he's like, oh, you have to come up here, Toddy. It's amazing. Like now that'd be worth millions up there. Yeah. But anyway, that's also 2006. It's a while ago now. That's the perfect example of the opportunity cost of the like, why people who question buying properties for 350 400 how could they possibly grow but it's less of a climb so if you think about a 400k property it's less of a climb for it to get to 800 as far as an affordability metric mm. versus a 600k property that you're hoping will be 1.3 1.2 million mm. all right you're about to jump into number five before and then i interrupted you so i'll ask again sorry dawn <laughs> what's number five on the list we're heading off to the wild west so we're going to regional wa bunbury WA. Umbry, okay. 160 uh, kilometers outside of Perth. Okay. So I really like Bunbury because it reminds me of kind of a Newcastle to Sydney, Geelong to Melbourne. Okay. We see what's happening in Perth. 100 people lining up for house inspections. Crazy mm. supply, demand and balance. The suburb within Bunbury we're looking at is called Cary Park. The median With a K or a C? C. C, Cary Park, okay. Cary Park. Okay. <laughs> Can you do an Australian accent again? That's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to embarrass myself a second time. Sorry. <laughs> 350. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. 350,000. 350,000. Yield of 6.5%. 6 6.5. 6 yeah, love it. Vacancy 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Again, basically non existent. Inventory levels are critically low. How low is critically low? Like there's hardly anything transacting online. There's hardly anything transacting. I see maybe two listings a week. Yeah. Wow. And I bet you as soon as they're up, they're down. They're gone. Yeah. They are gone. But the really interesting thing about this area is 32% rental growth in 12 months. 32%. That's huge. Okay. And is this because we've got a little bit of a distance between Perth it's like all of the, the madness has been happening in Perth. People have been going, actually, you know what? Maybe we could move out a little bit further and the madness is migrating. I think it's a beautiful area to live. So it has a population of around 80,000 people, huge government investment. They're upgrading the hospital with 300 million. There's massive lithium mine out there that has like billions of dollars of investment. Tourism. You can go swimming with dolphins there. Like there's That's some pretty cool. beautiful parts of Western Australia. Love it. All right. So we're looking at 300, $350,000 median house price, Western Australia, 160, or Bunbury rather, I should say, 160 Ks away from Perth, 6.5% yield, and basically a non existent vacancy rate. Correct. Okay. Dawn, is there anything else that you want to quickly add to this before we wrap things up? Just to say that investing in property is scary, but what's scarier is if you want to invest and you don't jump in and do it. So think about what future you will, will thank you for. So if you can only afford to invest 400k, not all is lost. Check out these suburbs, do your own due diligence and happy hunting. Love it. Dawn Fuhi from Future Proof Property Advisory. Thank you so much for jumping on the show. Thanks, Todd.